So briefly, would like to look at our theme for the month, and I'll be speaking from the book of Daniel, uh, the value of aligning to God through prayer. The value of aligning to God through prayer. And uh, in life, <clears throat> people align themselves sometimes to power or to other things so that if they know this is where I'll get my protection, I'll get my help, so I better align myself to that place so that my things will be taken care of. But many times, those things become like sand. They sometimes don't hold. They don't hold. We try, but they don't hold. And we'll see from the book of Daniel that the things that we align ourselves to and put a lot of energy sometimes look like they are holding, but they don't hold for a long time. They are sometimes very shaky, in shaky ground. But as we think about this month in prayer, as we think about aligning ourselves to God, let's see some of the things that are beneficial that would help us even to go deeper and making a resolution that we want to align ourselves to God and commit to prayer. Now this, you know, Daniel appears to us, comes to us, it says in the Bible, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. Interestingly, it says, and the Lord delivered Joachim, king of Judah, into his hands, allowing uh, along with some of the articles and all that. So, the story of Daniel is told as a story of a people who are already, who have been taken to captivity. So they are not in their own land. God has given over Judah to captivity. And so, Daniel comes to the scene. And interestingly, Daniel uh, in captivity shines. I've wondered every time I read this book, I say, how is it that this young man, not in his own home, in a difficult state, comes to the limelight in such a way? <clears throat> so, during this time of captivity, the king decides and says, I want some people to come and work in my courts, in my place, in state house. But I want good young men. And I want those of royal blood. They, have, uh, they know what it is to be in the royal palace. And so these young men are picked, and uh, the story is given. They are changed names, but basically the Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and of course Daniel as the leader. During this time, they are told they are going for three years to be treated with royal food, with things, etiquette. You know, they'll be taught everything that they need to know about serving the king in his royal courts. And the food will be so good that uh, it will change the way you look like. It's the best of that time, the royal food. But Daniel makes a decision that is very interesting that I'd like us to take note as we think about aligning ourselves to God. In verses 6, uh, verses 8 of chapter 1, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Praise God. You know, it's amazing uh, with the offer that was in place for Daniel, being in the royal place and the treatment that he was going to get, it would have been so easy to say, what is the food, by the way? I'm being persuaded. I'm being asked to take this. It's a requirement for me. It is not my choice. They have said you have to do this. But Daniel knew who he would align his life to. Quite earlier, he had made a decision that wherever God puts me, I will do the will of God. 
Wherever God places me to serve at any place, I will align my life to do his will. And there, should, there will be no excuse. God's will comes first. The rest is second. And I will have no excuses to make. So Daniel makes a serious request. He told the guy who was given to oversee them to make sure that they, they are treated well. He told them, please, for me, I want to make a request. Because he knew from the scripture, if he participated in that, he would have defiled himself. It's very clear that the food had a, had, was, was done in a way that would not honor God. And so Daniel resolved, I'm going to honor God regardless of the consequences, number one, but uh, even if they reject, I will still honor God. So he goes to the man, and this person tells him, I have no problem as a person, but suppose the king hears that I'm not doing what I was told to do. He tells him, don't worry, give us just 10 days. Try us. Just bring Ilemboga, just, just the normal mboga, sukuma, Cabbage, what else? I know the mboga of the time would have been different. <laughs> but just the normal mboga that you know. He said, just bring that to us. Everybody else, give them the royal treatment and the food and everything that you give. But after 10 days, come and look at us and see if there will be a difference. The Bible records here that after the 10 days, they looked way better than everybody else. Praise God. <laughs> so you can say Sukuma with Jesus <laughs> changes lives. <Burn> us if you <laughs> uh, These men, just by eating vegetables in honoring God, God had a way of making them healthier. The Bible says they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who are in the royal, uh, who ate the royal food. So anyway, the card had no choice but to accept. And it's recorded that at the end of their time, when they were presented before the king, the king was very impressed with these young men. So challenge number one, who do you align yourself with? He said, I'm aligning myself with God doing his will. I will not compromise. Even if it's not a requirement as such that he shouldn't, but he knew what God expected of him. Immediately he finishes that challenge, a second challenge comes in chapter 2 that Daniel had to face. And this time, it's one of those chapters I've read several times and you are going, wow, this is very, very, very difficult. The king has a dream, and in this dream, the king... Uh, of course couldn't understand what it meant and he needed people to interpret but he decides to do something very unique it calls all the magicians, the enchanters and all those people with wisdom and um, you know who could interpret dreams in his kingdom and tells them I'm giving you an assignment and this assignment is twofold, number one tell me the dream that I had and then after you tell me the dream that I had, tell me the interpretation of the dream. Now, you can, you, you can, you can, you can uh, feel with me <laughs> the atmosphere when these people came in here. They don't know what the dream is. I used to the king telling them, I dreamt this way, would you interpret for me? But the king said, this time round, I want to know from you so that I know you are genuine. These guys consulted, they did what they, they persuaded the king to tell them, and the king refused. And in verses 11, this is what is recorded. These guys went back to the king and told him, what the king asked is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods, and they do not live among humans. Now, I'm falme, ile umeuliza... It doesn't matter how good we are. It's only the gods that can reveal this or that can tell you what your dream is. 
But unfortunately, they don't live here. So, Pole, Pole Mfalme. After the king heard that, he was so annoyed. And so he decided these people are of no use. They are not good. If they cannot tell me what my dream is, then the titles they have in my administration is useless. They don't need to be here. So he decided they will all be killed. Unfortunately, Daniel was classified among those groups. And so when Daniel heard this, that they had planned to kill him, uh, he went to a guy called Ariochu had been given that assignment. And he asked him, what is going on? And the gentleman explained to him, and he said, it's a serious matter, I've been given assignment. If you people don't tell the king what the dream is and interpret it, you will all be dead meat. So Daniel, in verses 17, returns to the house and explains the matter to his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he urged them, listen to that, he urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. And God heard their prayer. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised God of heaven and uh, he went on to talk to God. So Daniel is able to interpret the dream that God had given. And as they celebrate and thank God for that victory, I share this to all of us to say that the life that we live in, there are many challenges. When you think you are celebrating one victory, another challenge comes up. And so in chapter 3, the challenge that comes to this, now to the three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is about worshipping basically what we would say an idol because the king had put it. I won't belabor that because you know the story. They make a resolution and say, come rain, come what? Our resolution is we will obey the Lord. Even if it costs our lives, it doesn't matter. And so God lifts them and helps them out of that challenge. Then, as they were celebrating that, the king again has another dream. And this one is a very interesting one. <laughs> the king has a dream that affects his own life. And he says he saw a very big tree that went up to heaven. And so he's trying to understand this. And again, they tried to bring in the magicians and everybody else, and they could not uh, get, get that. And so Daniel is brought in. And I looked at this and I said, for us particularly, not even as clergy, because Daniel worked in government. And so I want to challenge all of us. I know this church, a lot of us work in government or those institutions. Daniel is a servant of the king, and yet he is able to tell the king the truth. Uh, it would cost his life if the king decided otherwise, but he knew that he had to be aligned to God and say what God once said. So the dream is actually uh, a dream that condemns the king to be an animal, and so... <laughs> When Daniel was called in, the king looked at him and said, why are you perplexed? And he told him, king, if it was somebody else, it would be different. But this dream is about you. And this dream basically says this. God elevated you, gave you power over all dominion by that time, really. But you allowed pride to come into your life. And in paraphrasing, you've taken the place of God. And so God is going to show you that he is God and you are a human being. And he will show you this by sending you out into the wilderness to live amongst animals. And you will grow 
uh, feed like an animal, you will eat grass, you will live in the dew, uh, when in, you, you know, you live there for those years until when you recognize that there is a God in heaven who rules the earth. Burn us if you were. Look at that government servant. You know, the person who serves in government, able to speak the truth to power. Burn us if you were. <laughs> this is the message of God. It's not my message, Daniel says. But this is what God says about you, king. You've taken the place of God, and God is God, and he will never share his power with anybody. So what happens is that comes out to be true, and Nebuchadnezzar was then uh, taken until he recognized God, and God restored him. After Nebuchadnezzar, his son, who is called Belshazzar, takes over. And again, pride came in, took in the things of God, and began to, you know, the things that were brought from the temple, the gold and uh, silver uh, goblets, and he began saying, we are going to see my power. We are now even going to celebrate with the holy things of God. And as they were celebrating, he was sitting, a hand shows up, and the hand writes in front of him, one as if he were... <laughs> I just pictured that and I said, if I were the king, I would, I would, I would run away <laughs> and repent very seriously because you don't know where the hand is coming from, but the hand is writing. And uh, the king got shocked. He couldn't understand. And so he brought in again the experts. The experts could not understand what was going on. So the queen, on hearing this, of course, in, in seeing what was going on, told the king in verses uh, 10 downwards of chapter 5, he says, she says, uh, may the king live forever. Don't be alarmed. Don't look so pale. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods. Praise God. So Daniel distinguished himself that those around him actually knew that this man is different. He has the spirit of God. Of course, they didn't know. He said, this man has the spirits that we don't understand. They must be the spirits of God. <laughs> and uh, he helped your father by telling him, uh, interpreting dreams and doing all that. And so basically, he asked the king to call him. So when Daniel comes, again, government servant, under the president, under the, under the leadership, of his boss, and he was actually an immediate boss, very, very close, because he was high in power. But he tells him the same message that Nebuchadnezzar God, and he tells him, finally, this is what it is. Many that you saw written there is God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found one thing, Perez. Your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. And then at Belshazzar's command, Daniel was clothed. Interestingly about those kings. So he tells him the truth, and uh, the king realizes this is a message from God. This young man is truthful, he's honest, he's telling me the message of God. Instead of killing him, he clothes him and promotes him. One as if he were. And Daniel continues to rule. And that the time, as Daniel had said, it did happen as it was. The kingdom came to an end. Now, I'll probably finish with chapter 6, because the rest are about uh, interpretation of dreams that are, will, will come to pass, about kingdoms that will, will come. But as Daniel was celebrating the victory, even in sharing the truth, and he was being elevated, some people were very envious. This guy is not an original man of this land. <laughs> this guy has come, he's in captivity, but he's ruling over us, and he's having favor with every king that has come to place. So they said, particularly this time that he had been elevated so high, they planned we are going to bring him down. And they looked at corruption, they couldn't find. They looked at other things, they couldn't find. 
And so finally they decided, you know what? This guy loves his God. And every day, three times a day, he goes to prayer. He kneels facing Jerusalem and prays to his God. So they said, we'll use what is his strength to bring him down. And so they go to the king and say, king, let's have this particular period where nobody prays to any other God except you. And of course, the king found that to be very good because if everybody really wants to elevate you, he thought that was the best thing. What he didn't know is that they were setting up Daniel. After he had put the sign and the order was executed, you know, Daniel realized he had been set up. But see the difference. Daniel of chapter 1, who had said, I will not defile myself with the food, comes to be the same Daniel in chapter 6, one as if you were. He said, the person that I will align myself, even in this most difficult situation, that my life will be in danger, is God, one as if you were. I will align myself with God. So he chose, he said, the Bible records that three times a day, he went before God in prayer. He went before God in prayer in the morning, midday, and, and in the evening. I'm just putting up the times, but the Bible says three times a day, he went to God in prayer. Because Daniel knew the secret, that power lies in God, one as if you were. He knew that no matter what schemes men do or things that are, are planned, and even if it means it costs my life, I would rather align myself with God because he is able to bring breakthroughs in life and change situations. And so when it was discovered that Daniel was, do, was doing this and he was accused and the king found out, the king tried to help him, but there was no way. They finally dropped him into the pit where lions were there expecting that he's dead. And they put a seal to say, Kiburia hui mutu imefanya nini? <laughs> Imeisha. Hii pride ambaya nasema mungu yake, imefanya nini? <laughs> Imeisha. It is now finished. And I'm sure they went back celebrating, dancing and saying, we have done it. It is done. But it is not over until it is <laughs> over. Because Daniel knew his God. The Bible records those statements that we read that were amazing. Because he aligned himself with God in prayer, God did miracles. The lions became very good friends. They actually probably sang good songs to him. <laughs> they licked him and told him, don't worry, you are amongst your friends. <laughs> the whole time. So in the morning when the king was running, Daniel, Daniel, I'm so impressed with this king because it looks he knew that the God of this man is real. And so he ran and said, Daniel, Daniel, did your God save you? Was he there for you? And Daniel from the den says, King, live forever. My king showed up for me. Bonus, if you were. <laughs> my king, my king, the Lord of Lords showed up for me. He came and he sent his angels so that I was protected. I am safe. And so Daniel was removed. And to prove to you that the lions were very hungry, when the others were thrown in, not even any, any bone remained. <laughs> they were crushed before they, they, they landed. The lions were just waiting. When you're Nanguka, <laughs> it's done. They were all uh, crushed and done. And the chapters that follow, God reveals great things to Daniel. He reveals about the kingdoms that will come the future, how it will look like. You know, after this kingdom, this will come, there will be these powers. And even to the end, shows him up to the end of times and also reveals him his position. In chapter 12, when you read at the end, he actually tells him this about himself. As for you, go your way till the end. You will rest and then at the end of the days, you will rise and receive your allotted inheritance. Praise God. That is what God told Daniel. 
church, this is a big book. We don't have time to go through each and every detail. But I hope you will find time to read the book of Daniel. What was prophesied then, most of it has come true. The remaining ones will come true because God revealed this to his servant. But here are three lessons for us as we think about the life of Daniel. Number one, God comes through for you in times of difficulty. Praise God. God will always come to you in those difficult times. I did enumerate several of them in chapter 2. When Daniel uh, and uh, when the wise men, the enchanters could not interpret and the life of Daniel was at risk, God came through for Daniel by revealing to him what the dream was and being able to give him the interpretation of that dream. And he saved the life of Daniel and his friends. In chapter 6 that we've talked about, even after being falsely accused, thrown into the dens, he came out alive. He came out alive because God came through for him. I don't know your situation. You may be going through a very difficult time now and you are asking, where is God? My question to you is, are you aligned to him? Have you made that decision that Daniel made in chapter 1? That for me, no matter what comes, I'm aligned to him. And uh, you would see that every time they were faced in a very difficult situation, they knew it is prayer that will change things, praise God. They would run to God, they knew this is where power resides, this is where help comes from. I may have friends, I may have the king who knows me, I may have all these things, but where my help comes from is God. That is where I will align myself. As, you, as we all go through challenges, and they do come in life, they do come, we want to be aligned to God. That is him that we can run to. You may be going through financial challenges and you are saying, this is impossible. I don't know how I will come through this. Or your marriage seems not to be working. Things are just, you are trying your best. Things are not working. At the workplace that you are in is shaky. Your health is failing. You know, people are accusing you falsely or things that are happening. You can feel in what is happening in your life. And you are saying, will I get through this? Is there a way for me out of these challenges? I have good news for you. We serve a God who comes through for us. Praise God. We serve a God who comes through for us. We just need to be aligned to him in prayer. Go to him. It may take long. You may be saying this has taken long. But God is there. He will see that he delivers you. But more than everything else, you are aligned to him. Like Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego. Your biggest joy is may the will of God be done in my life. May the will of God be done in my life. And so, during this time of prayer, just like Daniel asked his friends to pray for him, just like as he prayed three times, let's get deeper in prayer, in aligning with God. Number two, God empowers you for the calling and mission in your life. God empowers you for the calling and mission in your life. It is, it is amazing how in Daniel 1.17, God knew that these young men have aligned themselves to me and they are going to live for my purpose. And so he knew what they will need to walk this journey of life. And so what he gave them was interesting. In verses 17, it says, To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. Praise God. God knew the challenge that they would go through in life. And so he equipped them 
for that challenge. Bwana sifiwe. The fact that God has equipped you doesn't mean you will not go through those challenges. But God has already equipped you so that when those challenges come, you will face them through his enablement, through his power. And whatever he has put in your hands, he will help you through so that you can overcome those challenges that come in life. The truth, church, is whoever tells you difficulties will not come in life because you are a Christian is lying to you. <laughs> uh, they will. Uh, you read everybody that served God went through major challenges in Bible. But God had a way of helping them. God had a way of empowering them so that when those times that are difficult comes, they would still be able to achieve the mission that God had called them to do. And at the end, he would be able to crown them. There's something that God has put in your hands. You may not be seeing, even as you go through challenges in life every day. When Moses had his challenge, uh, God told him what is in your hand. I have already given you something. And when he said, this is what I have, the stick that God gave, uh, or the staff that God gave Moses, God used it to perform great miracles for the mission that God had for him. God has placed something in your hands to use even during those difficult times. As you choose to protect the reputation of God, as you choose to align himself to him, he knows that he will empower you to go through those things that you come through in life. Number three, God reveals the future to you and prepares you for it. Now, it's an amazing uh, uh, part. When you read the book of Daniel, in chapter 2, chapter 8, 10, 12, all those chapters, it's amazing how God reveals to Daniel things. Things that nobody else could know. Because Daniel was his child and he had chosen to align himself with God and so God was able to reveal himself. And one of the great things that God revealed to Daniel, amazingly, is life is not composed of the temporal things that we see. There are eternal things that are more important and significant than the things that we naturally see in our eyes. And so that is a great blessing. And church, I want to tell you, you are blessed. Those of you that have known God and are here, turn to your neighbor and tell them I'm blessed. <laughs> Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Because God has chosen to reveal and help you to realize that the temporal things that are here, for here and now, are really temporal. But there are more important things that are spiritual, that are eternal, that are yet to come, that we need to be focusing. If you don't understand that, spend time with somebody who doesn't know God. <laughs> because for them, their focus is where? <laughs> here. And everything is where? Here. And they will use whatever they can to make sure the here and now is, 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 is achieved for them. In fact, when you read the story of Nebuchadnezzar, as God, as God lifted him up, he forgot about God and focused on the now and here. And God comes to him and, 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 and tells him it is not about this. Uh, the Belshazzar, the same thing. Uh, God had to remind him using a hand to say life is not about celebration, feeling big, and uh, all that. Daniel was highly favored of God. He knew, because God gave him that we can live life now here, you can be a leader in the nation, you can make decisions that will impact people's lives positively, you can do all those things, but don't have your eyes fixed here. Have your eyes fixed on God and the future that God is preparing for his people. 
That is more important than anything else that you can have. My prayer for us is we should not be short-sighted. We shouldn't be short-sighted. Most of the time, particularly when things come and they are good, we can easily be short-sighted. Power has a way of making us very short-sighted. Wealth has a way of making us very short-sighted. All these other things, until we forget, like what the Bible says, we are sojourners in this world. And how we live our lives now is very important before God that it should have impact in the, lives, in the life to come. Daniel understood that, and because he was a child of God, God was able to whisper to him to show him. As you walk through this journey, I pray that God will whisper to you, Bwana Sifiwe, and reveal to you those important truths about life that you will understand so that you live not only for yourself, but for his glory. That the place he puts you in society, you, 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 you make sure that God is glorified and he will reveal to you how you need to use that position for the glory of God, that you don't become short-sighted in any way, that you will have uh, the long view of life so that you are able to live for the glory of God. And as there's no better way for God to whisper to you than to go to God in prayer, than to seek him through prayer, as Jeremiah told us. That as we gather as a community, we seek God. Individually, you seek God so that God can speak to us. As we read his word, he speaks to us. He whispers to us. As we speak to him, he is able to affirm and communicate to us his will. I talked to somebody recently and asked him about his relationship to God. And I said, how are you doing with God? And basically, it was, Christ is my personal savior. And so I asked the next question, is Christ the Lord of your life? And the person took quite a while as they thought through that because this was an honest person. And so he said, you know, that second part, I'm not sure. One as if you are. <laughs> there are honest people out there. <laughs> so he said, the second part, I'm not sure. But I have committed my life to Jesus. But I don't think I have fully surrendered to Christ. That he is my Lord and Savior. That I'm aligned to him so that he can lead me in life. And so we had the discussion on what it means to totally surrender your life to him so that he's Lord, so that you are aligned to him, and so that God can guide and lead you. Daniel and his friends were able to go through life because they are totally surrendered to the Lordship of God, and so that God was able then to work in and through their lives. I don't know where you are today. You may be struggling even when we talk about prayer. It's a very heavy thing because you've not been aligned to God by coming to know Christ. Or he's your savior, yes, but you've not submitted to him so that even prayer becomes a burden. We want, I pray that this September will be an enjoyable one, that you will be talking to your God, you'll be having that relationship with him, that you are aligned to him and you are saying, God, I want to be aligned to you fully. I want to surrender to you. Let's all stand as we pray together. <clears throat>